when you start working in MATLAB, whether doing calculations or working with data from external sources, sooner or later you will come across NAN. So that one means not a number in MATLAB. What does it mean? Well, in a mathematical sense, a calculation can give you not a number. For instance, when you are trying to divide infinity by infinity or zero by zero. These are the most common cases. So not a number means it cannot be numerically defined. On the other hand, if you load data from external sources, if there are some empty cells in that, that data, then MATLAB will most commonly represent them as nuns. That's the default when you use import. And nuns can be actually tricky because, for example, many mathematical operations, when you try to do something on a vector or matrix that has a nun within its values, then the result will be none. For instance, mean value of a vector with a bunch of actual numbers, one, two, three, but then one none somewhere in the middle, mean value of that will be a none, sum of that will be a none, and many other operations will be none. One of the few MATLAB functionalities that smartly omit nuns are most of the plots. So that's why it's important to know how to identify nuns in your data. And for that reason, there is a function called isNone. So that basically verifies whether something is none or not. So if we use as is none on a none, then it returns yes, which means one in MATLAB language. If you ask is none on a number, it will say zero because it is not not a number. If you ask is none on text, it also returns zero. Remember that not a number doesn't mean it's a string array or something like that. It means it is from calculation point of view, not a numerical result. So that's on individual values. If you have an entire vector like x in here, when you ask MATLAB is none of x, it will tell you individual answers for all these elements in here. For example, if we have some data, we loaded some data which had two empty cells in Excel, and then they come up in MATLAB like this. So that means that really that those cells were empty. And then when we have a bigger data matrix, how do we check for nuns? So of course we could ask directly is none of data if data was the name for our matrix. And then we will get this result in here and then we check by hand, okay, there is one here and one here. In the same way we could actually manually have just checked the data. However, if the data set is actually large, then looking for nuns or ones like this by hand may not be such a good idea. So that's why we would like to use a bit more automated way to identify whether there are any nuns in a big, big data set or not. So for instance, if we had again that data with two columns, doing is none was giving you that bunch of zeros and ones, and there were some two ones somewhere. So if you think of it, when you apply sum on that, that one, sum, remember, originally works on columns, so this way, it means that this sum will, for that case we had in here, it will return zero for the first column and two for the second one. Because it adds up zeros and ones, so the sum equals exactly how many ones we have in a particular column. So this is within columns because sum by default works on the columns. If you want to know the result from your entire data matrix altogether, if you, for instance, you have many, many columns as well, and this sum of is none data would give you still many answers here for each column separately, then you can use double sum. So first it's when MATLAB ex executes this inner part, of course, it will create a vector, which has the individual sums of each column, but another sum will then sum up that vector. So for this case, we had the answer in the end is two of this double sum. 
Then there comes the question of finding where are the nouns. Knowing that they are is one thing, but if you would like to handle them, for instance, replace them with mean value of your data or maybe remove entire rows completely or entire columns completely if you have some nouns, uh, this is where you need to know where exactly they are, so which row and which column, and this is where the function find comes in handy. So again, find works so that it finds things which are non-zero. So in this case, when we enter is none data equals one, please notice the double equality, which means we are asking where the data is one. So this brings us a bunch of zeros and ones, and find will po point out in which position we have our ones in here. So again, for the case we looked at, the answer becomes 12 and 19, and why is that? We had a matrix with two columns, it was 10 by 2, and suddenly the answer is 12 and 19, so where does it come from? Well, from the fact that MATLAB counts matrix elements like this, if you, if you don't point out that you really want to consider rows and columns specifically, the order is like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, here up to 10, and then there's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and so on. So this is the 12, and this is the 19. Then if you wanted to say maybe that for this particular data, that in my data matrix, those where I found that is none of my data, equals 1. I want this maybe to be replaced with zeros. It will work, but you don't have that view on where exactly they are, because if you just replace the elements, it's okay to do it like that. But for instance, if missing values force you to, for instance, cross out this entire row and cross out this entire row, you really need to know in which row your problem is and not just where in the entire matrix. So that's why, in this case using function find, we can ask for the rows and columns. So that tells MATLAB. Now when we ask for two outputs uh, after using find, MATLAB knows it should tell us row and columns. These R and C are just names, so you can call them whatever you like, A and B, cat and dog, house and tree, really, that these are just names. But from the functionality on, of function find, MATLAB knows you are asking for row number and column number. So when I combine then row and column like this into one matrix, because initially row then would come as uh, 2 and 9, and column would come as 2 and 2. And if you we look back at our data that we had, then indeed where our nuns were, well that was row 2 and it was row 9 and then in both cases the column location was the second one. So this is where this comes from. Row 2 and 9 and column 2 and 2. So then you can consider that for instance from your data you want to remove entirely the rows and you could do it, for instance, by saying data of those. So now I point to rows 2 and 9. Notice that I kind of give in an array having uh, the row numbers. And then for the columns, I would just tell MATLAB to make those empty. So then it will kind of cut them out from the content. Then my resulting matrix would have eight rows and still two columns, and the entire rows where my data was missing would now be removed. You cannot, remember, you cannot kind of remove just this element and just this element, because matrix cannot have a whole, but you can remove the entire row. That's perfectly fine. And of course, about data in general, the decision whether you should replace nouns with other values or omit them completely in the calculation is very subjective and it's really based on the data and on the problem. So for instance, once again, if you just need to find 
for instance, some statistical features of the data, uh, then you could easily omit the missing values. So in this way, you would just say, if you have vector x, uh, you take mean value of those x elements which are not nuns, so which do have numeric numerical values. And if the data matrix has two columns, then the same trick would be done like this. So looking from inside, we consider second column of matrix. Then we ask, or we check, are the values in the second column of the matrix nuns or not? So that's where we point that if they are not nuns, so if they are numerical, then for those which satisfy this condition that they are not that they are not nuns, so they are numerical, for those rows and for the second column of our x matrix, calculate the mean. So kind of going from most inside to the outside in the end, this what it does is find the mean value of only those elements of second column of matrix X which are numbers or which are not not numbers.